Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Luke Beller, and today we're going to be taking a look at cornerback Greg Newsom, draft prospect. Because um, it came out yesterday, the Packers have met with him, as you can see here from Justin M. over on Twitter. Lots of buzz on Northwestern cornerback Greg Newsom II lately, and it's well-deserved. One of the best cornerbacks in this draft, a first-round talent. Newsom has met virtually with the following Titans, Packers, Chiefs, Jaguars, Buccaneers, Saints, and 49ers, just to name a few. But as you guys can tell, I'm doing it a little differently today, sharing my screen. So let me guys know if you enjoy this format. If you don't enjoy this format, I figured um, I was doing all this research and I, I thought I would just show you guys sort of what I'm looking at. But let me know if you guys enjoy this kind of thing or if you don't. I'd honestly be curious to hear. But if you guys are new to the channel, I put out Packers content every single day, pretty much. And if you guys would like to see that, feel free to subscribe to the channel down below. So taking a look at Greg Newsom the second. Right now, I'm on PFF's website. They have like this draft board that's pretty that's pretty good or pretty useful, I guess you'd say. And as we can see here from Greg Newsom, it was his junior season this past year. As you can see here from his PFF grade 2018, 2019, 2020, he took a huge step in the 2020 season, moving from like in the 400s when it comes to cornerbacks all the way up to 18th. So he took a massive step forward in his, I guess you could, it was his junior season, which obviously has led him to becoming a much higher draft prospect just because of how well he played in 2020. So taking a look here, it says, Newsom looked like a different player on the 387 snaps we saw from him as a junior in 2020. He only allowed 12 catches from 34 targets for 93 yards all season. So it seemed like he shut down pretty much every receiver he faced. I have some more stats here from PFF I found on Twitter. As you can see here, Greg Newsom the second allowed a zero passer rating on third and fourth down last season, only cornerback in the draft to do so. So in the important plays, he seems to be able to stop, you know, the receivers he's facing up against. And then it, as you can see here, lower lowest passer rating allowed this season among cornerbacks. Greg Newsom the second only allowing a 31.7 passer rating. So from his junior season, it seems like he's been a, you know, a beast when it comes to covering players. Last stat here, Greg Newsom the second when targeted 10 plus yards downfield, 15 targets, one reception allowed, zero touchdowns, one interception, 11.8 passer rating. So from all the research I've done on this guy, he seems to be a uh, very talented cornerback. PFF here has him ranked as 60th overall. I think he's like the 13th ranked um, cornerback, I'm pretty sure. And so it seems like he, from PFF's overall grade, maybe the Packers could get him round two, maybe round three. But I, as you saw that guy, Justin, he said he's a first round talent. So there could be some teams that see this guy as a potential first round talent. So we have some more uh, analysis here from PFF. So this guy's 6'1", 190 pounds. Um, so as comparison to like Jair Alexander, Jair Alexander is like 5'10". Kevin King is like 6'3". So sort of in between those two guys. And it sort of makes sense that Packers have been, you know, taking a look at cornerbacks just because as we saw, Kevin King didn't have a great season in 2020. And as I've said, I think the Packers need to come and draft a cornerback in the first few rounds. Maybe the first round, maybe the second round. This guy could potentially be available, you know, in that second round area. As you can see here, um, they say analysis third round while he played in a zone heavy scheme and Newsom has a scheme and versatile skill set at the next level. So it seems to think that people think he can sort of do it all. Um, pros, very patient, zone eyes, not getting caught out of position. Exceptional, playing deep to shallow, allowed one catch on 15 targets of 10 plus yards in 2020. We saw that stat already. Good link for the, for the position and already plays catch point well. Feet that can dance, no clunkiness to his game. And then the cons here, of course, every player has cons because, you know, these scouts have to be like, okay, what do they do well? What do they not do well? So maybe these are some things he may need to work on as he comes into the NFL. Very little closing juice. Not many plays athletically that open your eyes. A lot of sitting on, on top of routes in Northwestern zone defenses. Saw very little legit wide receiver talent outside of Ohio State in 2020. And in that Ohio State game, his pat, or his grade was like a 66.8. So, I mean, he played better against Ohio State than against, like, what's that? Is that Purdue? Honestly, as you guys know, I don't really follow college football that much. I've uh, just recently been getting more into all this draft kind of stuff, trying to watch film, trying to, like, understand how these guys play. And so that's why I feel like it's good to use... Some of these sources, you know, how who have been really studying these guys. And then taking a look down here, sort of their summary. The top paragraph is about like his high school. I'll, I'll uh, not read that one. You guys can read it and pause it if you guys want to see that. But it says down here, it may have been only six games and 387 snaps, but Newsom's 2020 season vaulted him up the PFF draft board. That's what happens when you only allow 12 catches on 34 targets and fewer than 100 yards all season. At six foot one, 190 pounds, Newsom flashed a terrific all around skill set. He made plays with breaks from off coverage as well as matching up at the line of scrimmage and press man. So it seems that he can play off the ball. He can play, you know, that press coverage uh, type of cornerback, which I think the Packers could use, have another perimeter guy outside of, you know, Jair Alexander. I think it could be very beneficial to this Packers defense. Then it finishes off. We just wish we could have seen more snaps from him. 
He acquitted himself well against his best competition in Ohio State, but that was only on 17 coverage snaps before he left with a groin injury. So I think the concern maybe with this guy is that maybe he hasn't played against, you know, top tier talent, and maybe that's why his stats were so good. But at the same time, you know, we don't really know how, you know, he will compare against these, you know, talented wide receivers. But um, all that I'm reading from this guy seems to be lots of positive stuff. It seems that he would be a good fit on this Packers team. Um, the Packers have already re met with also, what's his name, Asante Samuel Jr. I uh, put a video out on that guy. I'll link it down below if you guys have yet to see that one. Um, Asante Samuel Jr. seems to be uh, more talented. At least PFF has him ranked higher. I think lots of other people have him ranked higher. And lots of Packers fans in my comments seem to want Asante Samuel Jr. Um, so I feel like the Packers will take a cornerback in the first few rounds. Maybe they won't, but from what we've seen from the Packers in 2020 and the fact that they've been interviewing cornerbacks, you would sort of assume they come in and draft a cornerback. The question is, you know, which round will that happen? And then just to finish it off here, um, we have the draft network over here. They have some good stuff as well. So here's what they have to say. Greg Newsom II is an exciting cornerback pros prospect who will offer an NFL franchise plenty of appeal as a potential starter on the perimeter. So outside Jair Alexander on the other side, Newsom II has showcased strong ball skills and length to pair with high-end levels of flexibility and functional athleticism. That's a blend that is going to get Newsom II drafted sooner rather than later. This young cornerback prospect did miss a golden showcase opportunity against Ohio State in the 2020 Big Ten Championship game to put an exclamation point on his resume. But nevertheless, this is a prospect who saved his best football for last. Newsom II is instinctual and offers suddenness in split decisions and coverage, frequently driving to the target and attacking the football in the air. He brings the right kind of attitude to perimeter play, both in collision routes and in run support and tackling at the line of scrimmage. But his aggressive angles will need a little work to ensure he secured tackles at the catch point before attempting to attack the football and undercut throws. Durability will be a big missing link for those on the outside. Newsom II is yet to play a full season of college ball. Now he'll look to sell a pro team that he can play 16 games or more in a year. If he can, this is a very gifted player. So he hasn't played, um, I guess, in a full college season. And so maybe there's some little bit of a worry there that he won't make it through. Maybe he's like prone to injury. So from all I've seen from this guy, he seems to be a great prospect. I was watching some, some video footage on him. I'm not going to play it just because YouTube will like, sort of like copyright my videos and I can't do that, but I'll try to link some highlights down below because I know some of you guys have been wanting some highlights to go along with that. So I'll try to link some in the co or in the description so you guys can see that if you'd like to, I just sort of can't play it on the video as I'm recording. But that's pretty much all I have on Greg Newsom. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this guy if you guys like him and if you guys enjoyed this kind of sharing my screen format, at least for some of these kinds of videos where it's more like looking at, you know, sort of their prospects and sort of what people rank and sort of grade them as. I'll probably do a mix of maybe these if you guys enjoy them and I'll, you know, do my sort of normal normal type of videos as well. But if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on the video down below and make sure you subscribe if you yet to subscribe so you don't miss, you know, future Packers content, draft breakdowns, all that stuff. I'll be putting all that kind of stuff out onto a channel uh, as most of you guys who've been following along know. So thank you guys so much for watching as always and I'll see you guys on the next one.